If you're anything like me, then the holidays come around and you don't know what to get for your friends and family because they all just buy whatever they need and if they don't have it, it's probably outside of your price range. Luckily, 3D printing has made it very easy to create customized gifts like this nightlight lithophane. Without the light, it looks kind of silly, but with the light on, it turns into a nice grayscale image. In this case, it's of a dog. The operating principle is simple. Thick parts are dark and thin parts are light because of the varying transmission of light through the material. Fabrication begins with a photograph, which you convert to a lithophane model. You then add a nightlight adapter. You slice it up with slicing software, send it over to a 3D printer, and then you assemble it with your nightlight to get the completed product. Creating the 3D model. The hardest part is probably converting from the photo to the lithophane topology. Luckily, some fine contributor has made this website to do it for you. They have a Patreon if you want to help support them. So here we just go to images, we find the photo of our family dog, we load that in, it converts it to a grayscale and inverts it for you so you don't have to worry about that. Down below we have all sorts of ge geometries that you can choose from. We're just going to go with the outer curve since that works well with the nightlight. You can rotate it about and check out the details, but again it works best once you put that light behind it. Under model settings, you have size options and thickness options. You can borrow my settings to begin with, but if you want to change the contrast of the image, for example, you'll have to play with the thickness. Just remember the resolution of your printer. Under image settings, you can switch from positive to negative and mirroring and things like that, but probably you don't need to mess with these settings. All you really have to do is go to hit the download button and get that STL file. The adapter was created in Autodesk Fusion 360 because it's free. Uh, just a single extrude. The dimensions are here if you want to recreate it yourself, otherwise I'll put the file in the description for downloading. If you have a different model of Nightlight, then obviously you have to create your own uh, adapter. To convert to an STL, you click on Make. I don't bother sending it to the print utility, I just save it as an STL and work with it from there. So the next part is combining these two, these two bodies. So first we add in the base, and I drew it in millimeters so we import it in millimeters. So the scaling is proper. Next part, you load in the lithophane, which was also output in terms of millimeters. And you'll notice that when it imports, they're not lined up. Here, all you really have to do is click and drag one of these arrows until they line up and you're happy with how they're positioned. They overlap, and that's fine. We'll combine them later. But obviously you don't want like various pieces sticking through the lithophane. The repair option is optional in this case. Uh, it can fix some models if they're broken kind of triangulation parts and I find that works fairly well. As I said, you can still see that these are still two separate models. We don't want that. We want a single model for the sake of slicing and 3D printing. So to complete this, we go to edit and highlight both of the parts and click the merge button. I think this is probably done automatically when you save as an STL out of 3D Builder, but I include this step for completeness. And you see if you click on it, it is now just one object. So with that, we go to save as. 3MF is an option, but I save as an STL because I know all my slicing software can work successfully with STL files. And again, a creative name Nightlight. And that's about it for creating the model itself. Fused filament fabrication with the Ender 3 Pro. So for the Ender 3 I use Prusa Slicer as my slicing software. 
I just load in my nightlight.stl file. I just leave it smack dab in the center of the build tree as shown in this orientation. There are a few print settings that you can play with. Um, I'll go through them here, but the main thing is probably to look at the layer height. So you don't want the layer height to be too large, otherwise you'll get kind of like stripes probably in your lithophane. I usually go for about 0.1 uh, millimeters, and that works well in terms of a good balance between resolution and speed for making lithophanes. So with that, all you really have to do is click the Slice Now option, uh, sit through and wait for it to finish slicing, and then you'll get the output showing the path of the printer and the layers that it puts down. You can scroll through them if you want. If you see any holes, you obviously have to fix that, otherwise it will show up in your part. And then you just export the G-code. To interact with the printer itself, I prefer to use Repetier Host. Uh, I just like the interface of it, so I load in the G-code, and all you really have to do is go ahead and click the print button. And it will take a, a second or two to transfer over. And once it gets going, you'll be able to see the animation beginning on the screen, and you can watch it uh, virtually as it's printing uh, on the, print, the machine itself. So this is the Ender 3 Pro. I do recommend it as a printer for both beginners and advanced users for something that you could use if you just wanted something cheap. Um, I've had great results with it right out of the box. I plan on doing some upgrades to it, but I haven't gotten around to that just yet. The filament that I'm using is a PLA Pro, just a white PLA Pro from um, eSun. I found it to be a good balance of ease of printability and strength. I've used it for lithophanes like this and other projects like armor for cosplay. At this resolution, this print literally takes it takes like about four hours. But the nice thing about the filament printing is that once a print like this is done, there is no real big cleanup that you have to go through. Digital light processing with the Anycubic Photon. So for the resin printing, I prefer to use Chitubox. So again, you just load in your STL file. Clearly, the software thinks that the model is too large, but it isn't. All we have to do is rotate it about the Z-axis by 90 degrees, and we're good to go. Uh, you can add in supports, but in this case I don't even bother. I, I just build models like this directly on the build tray, and I haven't had any issues with that uh, approach. Again, here are some settings. If you're new, you can borrow my settings. If you've been using these machines, you probably have settings that you prefer. So again, you just click slice, and you wait for the software to do what's work. Once it's done, it's not paths like you'd expect from a filament type of printer. Instead, you have a series of images. So this is a stack of images, basically projections that's going to be projected into the resin itself to build your part layer by layer. And we take these images and send them over to the printer through a USB. So writing the file, again, takes a bit of time. So this is my Anycubic Photon uh, resin type of printer. I've had it for a little while, I've done some miniatures and other little projects with it. It has fantastic resolution. Uh, the resin I'll be using is a white photopolymer from Elegoo. You can see it here. All you really have to do is shake it up a bit and then pour it into the, the, build, uh, the build bath. You'll notice that I am handling this with gloves. The resin is somewhat toxic. You don't really want the uncured resin on your hands. It is quite smelly as well, which is why I have tubing in the back that you can see there that actually goes to a carbon filter to remove some of the odors from the air. Uh, I added that myself. Um, 
I do recommend if you have this in your house to add something like that to your machine. So there's the USB with the part on it. Go through the menus, select the lithophane that we're printing and hit go. So this print is actually at layer heights of about 50 microns. So it does take a bit of time, actually a little bit longer than the filament based fabrication. So this is taking five hours. And you can see below where those images, those projections are kind of flashing up on the screen, showing the progress. So that's about done. The part is finished. It is a little bit late. It's been like five hours. So the cleanup process, as I said, can be a little bit extensive. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave this overnight and pick it up tomorrow after work. So I'll just leave this. So I'm back and we can go through the cleanup and the post here. So we just removed the entire build tray. Again, wearing gloves, you can see my pro scales here dripping all over my machine. Uh, I'm gonna have to clean that up later. So next we just removed the part from the build tray and the Anycubic came with a little plastic uh, spatula to remove the part so you don't scratch it up with a metal spatula. You just need a little bit of force to push it off the build plate. So there it is. And next up is the cleaning. I'm going to speed through this because it does take quite a bit of time. But I don't want to leave out this detail because anyone who's new to printing and is interested in resin printing should be aware of the work that goes into having to basically clean up after it. The part itself will have resin left on it and you want to rinse it off. I use 95% ethyl alcohol. Some people leave it to soak for a while. I'm kind of lazy about it. I just dip it in and kind of set it aside to dry. I found that if you don't let it dry completely before popping it in uh, to uh, do the post cure, it kind of leaves some residues that don't look so good, especially for a lithophane that you're not going to paint afterwards. So again, for the post cure, if I could, I'd put outside, but if it's night or raining, then I, I use this little UV bath for basically nail polish. Now I have some aluminum foil here to keep the light from flashing out into the room. And I do three 30 minute intervals in different orientations. And you'll notice that this white polymer, in addition to some of the clear polymers, kind of turns a little bit yellow. That's because of an overexposure to UV light. In the future, I'll probably not do the post cure. I'll just rinse it off and coat it in UV protective coating. Testing the lithophanes. So we're pretty much done. We've created our lithophanes. All that's left is to make sure that they work properly. So we have our little night lights that we purchased off of Amazon. They're probably the cheapest ones that I could find. Um, they have little plastic covers that slip right off and toss that aside. That's the plastic cover that I used to design the adapter for these lithophanes. So here it is. This is the Ender 3 Pro version and you can see that it works quite well. I'm, I'm very pleased with the level of detail that shows up in the fur and the whiskers. Uh, it's pretty surprising given the amount of kind of layering that you can see in prints from filament based printing. For the resin type printer, I wish that this had a little bit better contrast, higher contrast, and I think I could probably get that if I played with the model settings in the website, but maybe that's something I'll work on in the future. For now, that's about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and let me know if you have any questions. Go make some lithophanes.